Where do you normally meet the word wave? Have a think about it. Pause this video. Here are a few examples of what the word wave means to me. You'll notice that you can have a wave on the sea. You could have a heat wave. Down here we've got some radio waves. You might have some wavy lines. Somebody might wave hello or goodbye. You might even ride a wave of emotions. When we're thinking about wave in science, we're thinking about something particular. And we're actually thinking about waves that transfer energy from one place to another. And there are two main types of wave. Transverse waves, these are where waves uh, move uh, particles up and down as the wave energy moves from side to side and longitudinal waves, which are waves where the particles move forwards and backwards, just a small amount as the wave energy passes along them. So transverse waves is our first example. And as it says down in red, examples of transverse waves are light, water waves and a type of wave produced by earthquakes called secondary waves. And when you look at the picture here, we have the wave motion moving from left to right. And as the wave moves, particles go up and down as the wave goes past them. So in a transverse wave, we have oscillations. That's the movement of the particles perpendicular or right angles to the direction of motion. So they're moving up and down as the wave moves to the right. So let's have a look at this transverse wave and label some of the features. So our first word here is crest. Crest is how we describe the top of a wave, the highest point of movement of the particles. The trough is the opposite of that, that is the lowest point of the wave. And the wavelength is the distance for the whole wave to do its motion. So the easiest way to measure that is to take the crest and the next crest and the distance between them, that is the wavelength. That's our wavelength. Now, the amplitude is the size of the wave. So how far those particles move from where they would be without the wave. So where they would be without the wave would be here. And as the wave energy moves across them, they get displaced or moved from their resting spot all the way up to the top here where the crest is. And that is the amplitude, that distance that they are moved away from rest. And you'll notice that there's an amplitude here. They're moved away from rest down to the trough. And those two amplitudes match each other as the wave passes across. And the frequency is the last word here. You can't really draw it on the diagram, but the frequency is the number of waves that pass a point every second. And it has a unit called the hertz. Which is, uh, the symbol for that is HZ. So we can have a look at some models of the wave. And here's one great model, which is called um, a slinky. And the slinky, you'll get to play with this in class. Um, this shows us some of the features of a wave. So as the wave travels away from the source, the direction of the wave is at right angles and the movement of the, from the the direction of the wave is at right angles to the movement of the source. And in each wave, the coils don't actually travel with the wave. They move up and down. So the source moves, the so the hand will move up and down and the wave will move to the right. But the coils actually sort of move up and down. This is our second type of wave, longitudinal waves. And if you look at the writing in red, these are sound waves and also a type of wave found in earthquakes called the primary wave. And they are compression waves. And you'll notice here 
that longitudinal waves, they have oscillations or the movement of the particles in the same direction as the wave energy is moving, so parallel to the direction of motion of the wave energy. So when um, you have your slinky, it doesn't move side to side, it squishes and stretches. So we have um, areas of compression and rarefaction on our wave here. So let's label the diagram of a longitudinal wave. So here's our wave. We've got some new words here. Compression is where you get uh, squeezed together coils. So there is a compression. And there is another compression. Um, rarefaction is where the coils or the particles are stretched apart. So here is an area of rarefaction, so stretched apart particles. And the wavelength this time is between similar parts of the wave like it was before, but instead of looking for crests and troughs, we look for two areas that are same, the same, like these two areas of compression, that's one wavelength, or between these two areas of rarefaction, that would be another wavelength. And the frequency, same as before, the number of waves that pass a point in any given amount of time, so number of waves that pass per second, that is the frequency in hertz. So let's have a look at our slinky model. So we've got um, a slinky model here. Um, the wave travels away from the hand, and the direction of the particle movements or the coils moving is in parallel to the movement of the uh, energy source. Uh, so in a longitudinal wave, the coils exact don't actually travel horizontally. Each bit just vibrates to the right and to the left and then back to where they started as the wave moves past. So a few quick uh, questions here for you. Pause the video and see if you can match up the definition with um, the term.